Diabetic foot ulcers are one of the most challenging things most podiatrists deal with. They have the biggest consequences. People could lose their feet, their toes. They could end up in a wheelchair. They could be hospitalized. They could be in a nursing home. So it happens five to 10 times a week for me personally, where I see patients in the hospital for these reasons, sometimes more. So we're gonna start with prevention tips. This stuff works. It's proven and it's important. And we're starting right now. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comments. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us, so thank you. So the first thing always is, is the disclaimer is see a podiatrist. Don't just treat yourself at home. If you're in Southeast Michigan, come see us. There's a form, there's an attachment below, uh, but there is great podiatrists everywhere that can take care of you because if you have diabetes, Sometimes if you haven't been evaluated, your blood flow could be getting worse, your nerve sensation could be getting worse, you might not even know you have a problem. So a podiatrist can take your history. Evaluate quickly and easily correctable things. Take an x-ray, take an ultrasound, check your hemoglobin A1C, check your blood sugar. This can all be done pretty quickly and small quick things can prevent huge problems because with diabetes, you don't want to wait too long and be hospitalized with permanent consequences. It's a big deal. So number one things that are recommended to do at home is wash your feet. So there's a lot of mixed recommendations. Soaking is generally told to be something to avoid in diabetics, but you have to be really safe is the bottom line. Because if you don't check the water, I have lots of patients that burn their feet with hot scalding water or soak too long and liquefy their skin. The whole point of foot soaks is to remove some dry skin, but as a diabetic, if you don't feel well, you could liquefy your skin and damage skin. So especially the warning signs are don't use bleach, don't use peroxide, don't use any of these fancy things beyond soap and water to clean your feet. That stuff could be dangerous if you don't have great feeling and if you have poor blood flow. But what you want to do is you want to get yourself a mirror. If you can't see the bottom of your feet, always check in between the toes right here. Check the bottom of the foot. Make sure you're looking at the bottom of the foot. So the front and in between the toes are the keys, especially ingrown toenails. That's where infections usually start. And then what happens is the infection usually travels up the leg and it starts getting red. But most start underneath calluses, underneath corns. So check those things out. If you have them and you're on blood thinners or have diabetes, check with your podiatrist. Your podiatrist can help with that. Wear good socks. So diabetic socks are out there and we have some great ones linked below, but diabetic socks are out there. There's moisturizers. Moisturizing can prevent a lot of friction. If you have dry skin, moisturize that skin, clean it, wear diabetic socks. And then the next thing is you want to wear good diabetic shoes. A lot of insurance plans for diabetics, they cover these for a reason. So I'm not saying you need to have one, but there's a reason insurance says, hey, it's a lot cheaper to spend money on diabetic shoe and insert versus the amount of problems people are getting. They've done the math on this thing and the math works out for you getting a shoe covered if you're a diabetic for most plans. What that means is you should not be walking around barefoot and walking in a diabetic sock does not count as wearing something. What you need is at the bare minimum, a slipper with an insert in there. That can do a really good job taking pressure off there. Again, diabetic shoes and things are covered, or at the very least, you want a good shoe with a st stiff, stable heel, nice foam. Look at how foamy this bottom is, not a pointy front. So like Oxford shoes in men or cute shoes in women, that's what does people in. You want a lot of foam and you want what's called the rocker bottom. See how that's rocking? If it's just jamming, then it's not a comfortable shoe but you wanna make sure inside your shoe, you're not pressing on the toes, the hammer toes, or the bunion inside the shoe. Avoid the narrow shoes. Shop in person for at least your first pair of shoes in that brand. You need help fitting your shoes. People with diabetes usually try and get tight shoes because they don't have great feeling and it makes them feel more secure. I'd say 90% of the time, most diabetic patients I see for the first time have too tight of a shoe. So come see your podiatrist for a proper shoe fitting. And then orthotics. Listen, they don't have to be crazy expensive, but in most cases they can be covered. But look at, look at how much your foot flattens out without the insole. But look at, with the insole, look at that support. 
right there. That's a lot of great support. That can make such a big difference is getting that pressure off the foot. So the next thing is circulation. So your podiatrist can help you determine this, but are your feet cold? Do you smoke? Have you had diabetes for more than a year? This can cause blockage. So sometimes people don't know if their blood vessel is very open or just kind of open. As an example, do you heal as quick as when you were a little kid? I've seen patients where their wounds and cuts heal like that as little kids, but as adults, it can take like six months to heal a basic wound. And they're like, oh, that's just normal. I don't heal. It's not normal. That's diabetes and poor blood flow. In our office, we have vascular specialists that can do tests and potentially schedule you for procedures to open up blood vessels. So if you're in Southeast Michigan, check out below and we can help you out with that. The next thing is peripheral neuropathy. So when you're walking, do you lose sensation? Try taking a feather and tickling the bottom of your foot. Do you feel it? And then put that same feather on your neck or somewhere. You're gonna feel it a lot more in your neck than in your foot or your fingertips as a diabetic. This is called stocking and glove peripheral neuropathy. There's 600 papers written about it every year. It can cause pain, it can cause a lot of issues. We have a great video that talks about peripheral neuropathy and how to take care of that right up here, but that's a huge risk factor. So get your peripheral neuropathy evaluated. The big problem with peripheral neuropathy is you're putting a lot of pressure, you're a heavy person. You're putting a lot of pressure on your feet, you usually way more. You're usually not wearing the right types of shoes. You don't feel it, your skin can rub. This can cause an ulcer. Bacteria can then get through those cracks, through that callus. They can cause an infection for your skin. They can cause cellulitis. They can cause bone infection. They could cause bigger problems. So be careful with all this stuff. Diabetic foot tips are don't go barefoot. And this counts socks. At the very least, get a good supportive diabetic approved slipper. These can help quite a bit. And we have some links down in our show notes. Get good shoes indoors. So at the very least a slipper, a good shoe with an orthotic. I love orthotics. I love shoes. They don't have to be expensive. They can help everything, including your knees, your back, your hips. Make sure you see your podiatrist and get good fitting shoes. Make sure it all fits well. See your podiatrist for toenail care, corn, callus care. This is where infections usually start. Get that stuff taken care of. It's high risk. I, I wouldn't say that just to force you in. Believe me, I t I, I'm not very strict with patients if they don't have a big problem. But with diabetes, you can't take chances because you could end up in the hospital worse. Use your hand to check water or use your elbow maybe if your fingers don't feel well. But when you get in a hot bathtub or a foot soak, make sure it's not scalding hot water. That's a big problem that I see. Check your feet every day. Get yourself a mirror. Make sure you're checking between the toes. That's a big tip. And depending on your risk factor, check with your podiatrist. If you don't have many risk factors, sometimes once a year is okay. If you have poor blood flow or nerve pain, then maybe every three to six months, if you need corn, callus, toenail care, sometimes every three months makes a lot of sense. So come see your podiatrist. There's a lot of great podiatrists around there and they're helping you with your foot care. It's an integral piece. Hit the subscribe for amazing foot content, bunions, heel pain, everything for the foot and ankle. Do it safely and cost effectively. We've got you covered. So subscribe.